Hi guys, it's Amy here, and today I bring you the finally full book tag. So I was tagged by the lovely Alina over at Tall Tales. She created this tag. I will leave her linked down below. I thought it was a really good idea. I love autumn. It's my favourite time of year. I was born in autumn. I just love getting the jumpers on. I've got my turtleneck on. I love getting the boots and the gloves and the scarves and all of that snuggly stuff out because it's just so cosy. I'm such a cosy person. I think it's just really great. So I'm looking forward to doing this tag. We have 10 questions all to do with fall or autumn as we call it here in the UK. Let's go. So number one, in fall, the air is crisp and clear. Name a book with a vivid setting. For this one I have chosen Jamaica Inn by Daphne du Maurier. This one, after reading it, like I still have the image of Jamaica Inn in my head. It's a very gothic, atmospheric, kind of eerie read set in this place called the Jamaica Inn, which is on Bodmin Moor. It follows this young girl who goes and lives there with her aunt and uncle, and her uncle is a really dastardly guy, and he's up to no good, and she kind of gets wrapped up in his story, and it's just wonderful. I would highly recommend. Daphne du Maurier is fantastic for this time of year anyway. If you haven't read anything by du Maurier, then I would highly recommend all of her stuff. Question number two is, nature is beautiful but also dying. Name a book that is beautifully written but also deals with a heavy topic like loss or grief. For this one I'm going to choose Extremely Loud and Incredibly Close by Jonathan Safran Foer. In all of the books that I've read from Foer, he has a fantastic way of sharing the story and a really unique voice in each of the different stories that he's told. This one is told through the perspective of a young boy named Oscar who is living in New York and you learn that Oscar's father died during the 9-11 attacks on the World Trade Center. We then follow Oscar as he trails around New York in the hopes of discovering something about his father and he believes that his father had kind of left something for him when he died. It's just a beautiful story, it's told beautifully, it's a really unique voice as I said, but also it deals with grief and loss in such a brilliant way. I hope you can see if I flick through that the book isn't just like normal prose, it's got pictures and lots of kind of random stuff going on as well. It's really great, I would highly recommend it. <laughs> Question number three is, fall is back to school season, share a non-fiction book that taught you something new. For this one I'm going to choose Dispatches from Syria, The Morning They Came From Us by Janine Di Giovanni. This one I feel taught me a lot because I didn't really know much at all about Syria. I don't really watch the news that often because it makes me feel really anxious doing that, especially if it's like before work and I then spend the whole day feeling really anxious. So I decided to read this one so that I could kind of be more aware of what was going on in Syria and you guys recommended this one to me actually and I'm really glad I read it. Janine Giovanni was in Syria kind of before ISIS kind of came about and so she documents all of that in this book and it is just like uh, it's one of those books I just want to hand to everybody especially people in England who kind of rant about people being in our country or refugees and and who are angry at those kind of people and I just want to hand them a book like this and just say well what would you do if you were in that situation it's just yeah I would highly recommend this one number four is in order to keep warm it's good to spend some time with people we love name a fictional family or household or friend group that you'd like to be part of so I don't think I could have answered this question without choosing something fantasy related and so I had a few things in mind and I think I have now settled on the Pevensey family from the Chronicles of Narnia and joining them on their adventures, going through the wardrobe into Narnia and just living life with them, like it would just so be so much fun. I certainly would love to join them through the wardrobe in Narnia, especially if we could meet all the characters and especially if it was snowing as well, that would be really cool. Question number five is the colourful leaves are piling up on the ground, show us a pile of fall coloured spines. Oh right, okay, I didn't prepare this. Um, I'd say that's pretty fall coloured, I like the look of that, nice oranges and reds, so there we are, it's a nice pile. Question number six is, fall is the perfect time for some storytelling by the fireside. Share a book wherein somebody is telling a story. So for this one I have chosen the wonderful and beautiful 100 Nights of Hero by Isabel Greenberg. This is a graphic novel. As you can see the illustrations are absolutely beautiful, the colour scheme is lovely and this is like many stories within a story. One of the main characters is called Hero and she is telling stories within this story over the course of 100 nights and it is just fantastic. If you haven't read this one or the Encyclopedia of Early Earth, I would really really recommend them. They are like loosely linked so it would be beneficial to read the Encyclopedia of Early Earth first but you can totally read this one by itself and still enjoy it so I would highly recommend. Is anyone counting the amount of times I've said I would highly recommend in this video because I feel like I've said it a lot already. <laughs> Number seven is The Nights Are Getting Darker, Share a Dark Creepy Read. This one is one that I've actually spoken about recently in my September wrap up but it's been in my head so much since then that I just couldn't help sharing it again and that is The Book Collector by Alice Thompson. This one is just so 
like it's it's dark it's creepy it definitely ticks those boxes and it kind of definitely put my kind of teeth on edge it definitely is right up to the line of what i am happy reading when it comes to kind of horror and kind of dark things because i'm not a huge fan of that it like bothers me too much i think about it too much otherwise but this was really great it follows this woman who's married to this kind of strange man who we have kind of suspicions about the whole way along and then we hear tale that kind of women are going missing from the local insane asylum and so the story goes on from there i wouldn't really want to share anymore because I think it's one that you just need to experience for yourself because it is it just it is brilliant so yes I would recommend highly <laughs> question number eight is the days are getting colder name a short heartwarming read that could warm up somebody's cold and rainy day this is another one that I've also mentioned before but I love it so much I just want to share it all the time with you guys and that is Winnie the Pooh by A.A. A. Mill if you were read this as a child or you think you remember reading it as a child and enjoying it you should definitely reread it as an adult because I have done that this year or maybe last year such a pleasant surprise to read books that essentially are for children but just are so relevant for adults as well and they're funny this is most definitely the one that you need if you're looking for a quick heartwarming read it is wonderful question number nine is fall returns every year name an old favorite that you'd like to return to soon and i'm going to copy alina in this one somewhat she spoke about one of these books and i'm going to say harry potter and the prisoner as one by jk rowling this is the illustrated version i'm so excited to read it because this is my favorite harry potter book so i just can't wait to see i'm like not allowing myself to flick through it because i don't want to spoil myself for all the beautiful illustrations so I'm hoping to read this one maybe around Christmas time. The final question is fall is the perfect time for cozy reading nights. Share your favourite cozy reading accessories. In Alina's video she spoke about tea. My favourite tea this time of year is Cranberry and Blood Orange by Twinings. This tastes like Christmas to me. I love, like I'm not a big fan of cinnamon so anything with cinnamon in I just I can't drink that. I, I hate cinnamon. Any food with cinnamon. Uh, I know people that's their like favourite Christmas flavour but I can't stand it. So anything with like cranberries and oranges in that'll do me and this is perfect. It's so tasty. If you haven't tried it go and have a hunt. Sometimes it's hard to find. If you go to like a bigger store though definitely check it out. I got this new scarf from Primark. It's lovely. It's so squishy and I love the colours. It's my favourite kind of colours actually, like these muted kind of pastel colours. And so this I think would definitely be one of my reading accessories. I quite often sit with scarves on at home just because, unless I've got a turtleneck on of course, but I, yeah, I get cold all the time. I get so easily cold, even with the heating on. Sometimes I have warming things on my feet, my hands, everything. My extremities just get cold really, really easily. So my new scarf is definitely an accessory that I love in the autumn. Nothing better than burning a lovely candle when you're snuggling up with a good book. And one of my favorite ones is actually also from Primark and it's the sea salt and lavender one, number four, if you want to go and find it yourself. It's really, really nice. And these ones, they come in such nice jars. Oh gosh, oh, it's so, I love it. It smells wonderful and it's really nice if you like lavender to help you like go to sleep and stuff. I always burn it kind of before going to bed and it's just beautiful. I'd love it if you shared with me some of your accessories that you love having around with you in kind of autumn winter time. I have so many blankets. My favourite blanket which you probably, I don't, I don't want to drag it off my bed but I'm trying to reach it a bit. No, can we get it a bit? This blanket you probably recognise if you follow me on Instagram because it's the one that I always like take pictures on top of. This is also from Primark. Can you see a trend here? I'd love to hear some of your answers in the comments below. Come and chat to me. I'm not going to tag anyone because I feel like I'm a bit late to the game with this one and it kind of happened a month or so ago and I feel like a lot of people have already been tagged. But if you want to be tagged and you haven't been tagged, then feel free. I have tagged you. As always, I will leave links to Facebook, Tumblr, Twitter, everything I've mentioned today down below. I hope you're all having a fantastic day and I will see you soon. Bye!